Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can create a basic YouTube thumbnail in Pixelmator Pro. And without further ado, let's get right into it. When you first open Pixelmator Pro, you'll be greeted with this page. In order to create a YouTube thumbnail, click create a new document. This means that you can select from any template or a blank canvas. Now, in the top right, click the button under preset and then search for YouTube video thumbnail. Or if you want to, you can open up the social tab and scroll down until you find the YouTube video thumbnail canvas. Click on it and then click create. You'll be greeted with this screen. If you check on the left, your resolution should be 1280 by 720. But for the sake of this tutorial, to make everything look higher resolution, I'm going to change the resolution to 4K. After that, drag the first image you want to deal with in your thumbnail. If you only have one image, drag that image. Now, you should have your image on your canvas. In order to move your image around, drag your image by pressing and holding on your image and moving your cursor. To center it, move your image to around the center of the canvas and wait till you have both the vertical and horizontal lines. Then, let go. To adjust the size, click on your image and choose one of these corners. And on that corner, drag outward to make your image larger and drag it inward to make your image smaller. After that, move it to wherever you need. For now, I'm just going to center this. After this, you're most likely going to need some text. So I'm going to click the text box and choose your font. What kind of font? There may be only one option, so just select that one. And your font size. I'm going to go with these settings. After selecting all of those, drag a box on your canvas or your text. After that, text should appear in the middle. However, if text doesn't appear or it seems to be too big, then drag this down so that the text becomes a normal size. To move your text around, click on your text once and then move it around. To edit your text, click on your text once as well as clicking at the end of the word text until you see this cursor, which is the default text editing cursor. After that, you can delete the word text and then type what you need. You might actually want to select your color, but in my case, black is okay. After that, add additional text by dragging another box if you'd need. If you forgot to change the color, you can change it after by clicking on your text and then getting the editing cursor. Then select the color page and simply drag this box. After that, you may want to put your text on a box of some sort. So click on this box tool and drag out a box. This doesn't need to be accurate as you can adjust it anytime. Then if you'd like to add curves, drag this little symbol inward or outward to adjust the curviness of this box. After that, you can go back to the cursor tool and then move it to anywhere you want. You can still adjust the size, by the way. If you have a box and it's in front of your text, then look at the top left and drag your box under your text. However, your text may still not be seen. That's because the color of your text needs to be changed because both the box and the color of the text are the same. Now you can see the text. You can still make further adjustments to the box, but the text might be in the way when you're clicking. So simply go to the top left and select the rectangle. Now you can use your tools on the right to edit your rectangle. Once you've finished editing your rectangle, you can add any additional ones by using the exact same process as before. And so if you need to add a background, first find your background, which I'm going to do on Google Images. Now let's add the background to the canvas. And now it may seem very small, so you can drag the corners to resize, like I said in the beginning. You may be thinking that the background is low resolution, just like I am. If not, great, but if you are, then Pixelmator Pro has the tool for you. In order to upscale your background image, you need to select your background and then go to Image Super Resolution. And then it's going to increase your image's resolution by about eight times. And you can review the changes by moving this white line along with your cursor. As you can see, it got rid of many of the pixelated spots over here. After you're finished with your super resolution comparison, click done to remove that white line. And now your image's resolution will have been upgraded. And if you need to color grade any image, click on 
the image that you want to color grade or select on the top left. Go to the colors tab here and color grade how you would like to. However, I'm just going to use the ML Enhance feature, which uses advanced AI to tune the colors how it seems to be best. As you can see, the AI tuned this a lot, and I don't quite like this, so you can undo that. Now that our thumbnail has been created, we can export it by going to the top right corner and clicking the export button. Then you can choose where you want to export it. Most of the time, I choose JPEG, but you can choose whatever you want. After that, you can save it as whatever name you want and, so, and add any tags if you need to, as well as selecting whichever destination you like. To bring up a more advanced destination selector, click the down arrow and choose where you would like your image to be saved. Then click export. You'll see this box that says exporting and once it's finished exporting, the box will disappear. As you can see, our image has been exported and this is our final image. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!